Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast. And this is episode 82. Hopefully, you guys are all doing wonderful. It's Sunday night. What's today? March 22nd. Um, same old, same old. Coronas, coronavirus, y'all. Coronavirus. Isolation. Self-isolation. Um, I'm good with it. Uh, I usually self-isolate myself anyway. Uh, anybody who knows me <clears throat> knows I can spend weeks in my office or in my house. Um, it's it's not a big deal. However, you know, yeah, I, I, I'm not praising this. This is not a good thing. This is actually quite scary, you know, something out of a, a damn movie or something. But, um, yeah, watching the numbers, man, I'm just, uh, I, I don't even know what to say, man. Like, it's scary. You know, we're looking at the you know people who are getting infected, people who are dying, and you know sometimes it's not it hasn't really hit home until it's in our neighborhood. When it starts really saturated in the neighborhood, that's when we're all gonna panic. It's gonna and that's the scary part. And um, I'm just praying that we can get through this quick and that uh, people definitely need to stay home. And that's what they're saying to do, man. I listen. I don't care where uh, other people oh, it's a conspiracy, oh, whatever, man. Stay stay your ass home. Stay your ass home. Figure out what you're gonna do. They were saying that the the boost of um, domestic violence was gonna go up because of this. Yeah, I can understand that. I could I could see shit people getting on each other's nerves. I can see that. But those are people that they're gonna get on each other's nerves regardless. These are the, the domestic violence is going to be, I believe, among people who normally have di- di- domestic violence. I don't think it's gonna be like a new surge of people. There might be just a little more instances instead of, you know, them fighting every night when he comes home or she comes home. It's going to be, you know, throughout the day, you know, and that's a sad situation, especially for the kids. You know, kids that have to experience that. No kids want to see their parents going at it like that. It's a scary situation, man. Um, I'm fortunate I never got to experience any of that. My mother made sure of that. My mother used to say that. <clears throat> While she was raising me, she didn't even want a boyfriend. Like, I'm sure she had her little... In fact, she did. <clears throat> she had a couple of her little flings. I remember that. But they never came to the house, you know? I would I would get a babysitter, and and she would step out. And that was... God, I could count that on my on one hand. I'm telling you, in all the years, you know? Um, she just... You know, she's... She never had a stepfather. She never gave me a stepfather. And not that all stepfathers are bad, um, but she's had experiences where she's seen some that that she knew personally that just were not good. And then with the rumors and stuff like that, you know, she was always scared of that. And she never wanted to give me a stepfather. I remember that being um, a real thing for her. I remember her literally telling me this. And uh, she would get mad. Um, there was a couple, well, really one boyfriend in particular. His name was Fido. Um, he was, uh, his name was really Carlos, but they called him Fido, and uh, don't ask me why, um, but uh, he was actually the super of our building when we moved from the Bronx to Queens. Now, my mother was a real estate agent, um, and she managed a handful of uh, properties around between New York. She used to go into Harlem. She had some in Queens and so on, and when the building that I lived in in the Bronx when my neighbor's house burned, I remember there was only four units in that building, okay? So it was two on the top floor, two on the bottom. I was up on the top floor, all right? And my neighbor across from us on the top floor, her apartment burnt down. And then the two apartments underneath us got flooded from the fire trucks. The only apartment that survived was my apartment. And it, and they ended up kicking in the door and taking like as many uh, st- things that they could salvage and throwing them into uh, my apartment, as- along with her dog. 
she had a dog that she put in there as well. I think that dog was with my dog. I don't even remember how that worked. And um, and I remember that being a real, real scary, uh, scary night. But anyway, back to the subject I was saying. So um, whereas everyone had to go live with people, my mother was able to get us an apartment by the next day. That's how crazy that was. <coughs> Sorry, guys. <coughs> Allergies, man. Yo, my car is covered with that crap. Anyway. And that's why I can't go in public. I cough like that for allergies. Everybody's going to look at me, man. They'll probably have me arrested. But, um, but yeah, so the next day we ended up moving to Queens, Jackson Heights. And we moved into one of the buildings that my mother actually managed. And one of the supers. And she knew one of the supers there. And come to find out that that super was actually a boyfriend. I didn't know this. <laughs> so, um, and, um. And so we wind up we wind up living there uh, like for the rest of my life, you know. I mean, until she passed, he passed in that building. Um, but uh, but yeah, man, uh, yeah, she was uh, she. And I remember when I said I said to tell people that he was my father. She didn't like that. Like she loved him, but she didn't want me saying. And she used to tell me, don't 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 say he was your father. What she didn't realize is that, man, I I used to call everybody my father. Man, I used to lie about having a father. That's crazy. That's some crazy. If you really think of it, man, I remember, you know, one is probably why I'm a pretty good storyteller. You know, I don't, I don't, I, hmm. like everybody says they don't lie. I don't, I don't lie, but I do. I might lie to my, my grandkids or my kids, trying to keep them from knowing certain things, just so it's not confusing or hurtful. But other than that, I, stay, I keep myself out of a situation where I have to lie to people. If I have to lie to you, I just rather not deal with you. Tell you the truth. Um, I learned that that doesn't really go anywhere. When you're young, you lie a lot, man. Everybody does. Um, man, honestly, I mean, it sounds like bullshit, but I really, I don't, I just don't put myself like, why am I, what am I gonna lie about? What? <laughs> you know what I mean? So I got nobody to impress. I already got my wife, and I can't lie anything about her because she knows everything. You know, so I can't make, I can't make myself seem like something like that I'm not in front of her and she would be the only one that would matter I can't do that because she knows me she knows me better than anybody so um but uh but yeah so uh yeah but what I what I was saying is I used to um I used to tell a lot of stories man. I was I remember growing up being a liar to the point where when I told the truth people didn't you know, didn't leave me uh believe me it was like that boy who cries wolf and I man I used to come up with some crazy stuff like I used to lie like for no reason. I remember this, man. I remember everybody sitting around. I remember one time. It's so crazy. I'm sitting in the hallway in my apartment, you know, in the hallway of my building in Queens, okay? So we used to all hang out in the lobby, right? So we'll be sitting, there was a radiator, and then there was some steps there. So we'll be sitting on the radio, and there was some steps, and there'll be like five of us, and everyone's telling a story. Okay, yeah, when I was in Colombia, because I was around a lot of Colombians, a lot of Ecuadorians, Peruvians, uh, that's in Queens. New York, black, Puerto Rican, that's it. Very few white. When I moved to Queens, a lot of South Central Americans, and then some white people. Puerto Ricans came later on. Um, but everybody was standing up, sitting around, telling these real, now they were all older than me, I was the youngest one, and they were all telling these fascinating damn stories. And I'm like, okay, I. And now I got a button. I got to talk, tell a story. I remember them talking about one time, <laughs> one time they were talking about amusement parks. And they're all talking about these legitimate rides that they got on, you know? I remember them. A regular roller coaster or that they used to call, I forgot what it was called, the Devil's Hole or something where you stand and, and then the bottom drops out and whatever. Anyway, um... So I remember them talking about all these different rides. I really wasn't familiar with the rides because I hated them things when I used to get sick. I still do. So I never get on rides. I love going to amusement parks, but I don't, go, I don't get on rides. I just watch other people do. But anyway, so they, they're talking about their rides. Finally, I, I butt in. I tell them about this incredible ride that I did. I think I told them I was in Florida or something. Because I, I used to go to Florida. I used to go to Mississippi a lot. So I'm telling them about this ride. And they say, yeah, yeah, it's a really cool ride. All right, check this out. You stand on a cliff, <laughs> and it's a, it's a swing. It's like, a, you know, you sit on it, and they strap you on. 
okay? Now, they have these things nowadays, okay? <laughs> but back then, they didn't have this. That's, that's why this was so crazy. And then you, they push you off the cliff, and you swing across this water, like this huge bed of body of water. And then you end up on the other side, okay? Now, these things actually exist today. I've seen them. The only problem with mine is I said that the ride... That the ride took a half an hour. <laughs> so, you know, now I don't know if I said that to just try to make it sound interesting, or maybe I didn't really have the concept, understand the concept of what a half an hour was, <laughs> you know? So all of a sudden they were all silent because they were getting into it. Like when I was explaining the whole breakdown, but I messed it up when I told them it was a half an hour because I remember one of my friends said, a half an hour? That's a long, you lot, man, that, you never did anything like, like that, you know? And um, and then I remember another time, I don't know why. Now, I actually took a plane, I think we flew to Mississippi, right? And everybody's talking, and you know, now, these people don't really travel that much. They might go to Columbia, go back, but other than that, they usually stayed home. They didn't really travel that much. They came to the country, they really didn't go back. For anything, you know, they had enough of that. So me, I got to go on summer times to Mississippi or go to Florida. I got to travel a little bit with, with my mom and stuff. And I remember telling them that the plane had no more seats and that I had to go in the bathroom and sit on the toilet for the whole trip. Why I said that, I don't know. <laughs> but I made it sound interesting. But of course, Ain't nobody believe me. So, you know, so I built that reputation up for a long time, you know, um, of people just, I could not say anything. People used to just look at, like, it would not take me serious, you know. So I don't know if that was me prepping myself to uh, to uh, write these stories. So they kind of worked out for me somehow, you know. But, um, but yeah, man, but, you know, I'm noticing now, um, you know, back to you know, what they're talking about with this whole, the possibility or the, the, what they saw, what they said, the, the increase of domestic violence. Like I said, um, that could be, I don't think it's an increase in domestic violence is my opinion. I just think it's an increase in the exposure of domestic violence. I think because now you have more chances to get to get um, in trouble with it, you know? Um, and you get, you have more opportunities for other people to see it, like your kids, you know? So some couples might fight when the kids are asleep or when the kids are in school, but now, you know, everybody's home and they have to be home, so you have all these people under this, uh, this roof, you know? But now in a positive light, I also believe that there is, will be an increase in bringing people closer together, that I do believe. Because even now you're seeing, uh, you know, couples who whose lives were, you know, you have a couple and the woman works in, or one of the couples, because it could be guy, guy, whatever the case, but um, uh, one works, you know, in one location, that works someplace else, and they come together, they see each other for a couple of hours, uh, then they go back to sleep because they both have to get up early in the morning. You know, so um, you end up with very few hours or very, very little time to be together, you know. Now we have this quarantine, this, uh, right now it's still um, uh, volunteer, what, what they call it? self uh, self isolation um, now you have that but you're getting a lot of people especially with like apps with TikTok I spoke about this yesterday it's funny because like every day I'm starting to see I just saw my brother Keith and his girl Marnie they're they're doing TikToks and now little Susie is doing TikToks on her that you can see on she'll repost on her Instagram and then you're starting to see I've seen Caroline from the cover girls I've seen Juana from um uh, JJ Fad and you know all these people that I know now, uh, now doing these uh, doing these TikToks uh, a lot of times as couples or families and basically you know passing the time. So I think TikTok is gonna they're gonna win 
<laughs> they're gonna win. Not only that, the people that are doing the productions have a little bit more time to really put some time into their productions. They're not shooting while they're in the car on their way to work. They're actually <laughs> setting up shots and doing the lighting and changing costumes. <laughs> yo, yo, this world is is crazy, man. It's so freaking crazy, you know? It's like, you know, so this thing would either pull us apart or bring us all back together, you know? Uh, of course, I'm hoping that and I'm praying that it brings us all together, you know? And, and you know, we have time to spend with the kids and, and the grandkids. And, you know, we have Santana here. So really, it's just me, Angel, and Santana and my dog Coco. That's it, you know? Um, there's, Erica's not here. My son's not here. No, the old grandkids, they're with their mom. We can't see them either. Uh, thank God for text. Thank God be able to share pictures. Thank God for social media. Think about this. Wow. So they're talking about social distancing, but a lot of us do that anyway through social media. Social social media is basically social distancing. Dis, 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 what? Distancing. Whatever. Anyway, you get what I'm saying. Um... That's what it is. I mean, it can't get no safer than that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so uh, the only virus you're going to get is on your computer, you know, your phone. Um, so, so you know, it's crazy. You know, it, we're in the midst of it. We don't know what the end is like. We don't know. We don't know how long the end will last, how long will it take for us to get to the end. Like, we don't know these things. So, um so it's a really, uh, it's a real funny time right now. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm still, you know, I'm all about doing my writing. You know, I don't know what you guys are doing. What, what are you doing to pass time? Some people watching TV, binging on on Netflix or whatnot. Uh, social media a lot of times. Is anybody being creative? You know, aside from like a TikTok or whatever, is there anything else that you're doing? Are you knitting? Are you designing clothes? Are you drawing? Are you painting? Are you writing any books? I mean, it's a great time. You hit working out. Maybe you're in a gym. You're, you have your own gym or you're working out. Maybe you're putting that time in, you know? Uh, that's my lack there. You know, that's sad though, however. <laughs> but um, I mean, what are we doing? What Are we, are we all doing something? You know? Um, uh, like I said, had this. Um, isolation situation wasn't in effect I'll still be doing the same thing I'll still be doing the same thing uh, I'll just be doing a little bit more work there'll be a lot more phone calls coming in you know right now that's dead like nobody's nobody's even trying to, to do anything I, I don't blame them I mean um, but you know you know try to get try to get creative see what you can do think about it. it's a good time to think man if you spiritual family you know you know maybe have a bible study or just read or Read to each other or, um, you know, reflect. Reflect on, on this world and, you know, what it's like and how blessed we were to be on it, you know, regardless of the outcome. I know that, that sounds kind of scary, but uh, we have an opportunity. We had an opportunity here. Yeah, and not too many people can say this. You know, there's a lot of people, you know, unfortunately have, you know, had abortion. So, you know, you have, you know, Unfortunately, uh, children who never made it, never made it into, into this planet, you know, onto this planet, you know, they made it and they were they were taken out of it. So there's a lot of reasons to be uh, to be blessed, even when it's temporary. You know, there's something something real special in that, I believe, you know, for people to even come and visit the surf like children for a short period of time. And then they're taken away. And it's like, why? Like. You know, why Why does this happen? You know, I just always believe that there's a reason for everything. And we just don't know what those reasons are. Not yet. But I believe that we will one day. You know, but it's kind of things that I think about. I tend to, I, I put the stuff in my mind a lot. Um, I think this, this time off is going to give us all a chance to really reflect. You know, and this, this might really make a big change to humanity. As a, as a whole, they said that the crime rate is really low. Like, actually, I'm getting the impression. Well, what I was told, I, I would have to do some research. I have it. I could be wrong, but they're saying like in my town that the crime rate is like at zero. Like, not, nobody's <laughs> nobody's trying to go out there. Nobody's trying to do anything. So, 
Let's pray it stays that way. Let's pray that, um, you know, it gives everyone a chance to kind of reflect on our current situation and what life is about and how, how much we take it for granted. Like we have so much confidence and so much faith that the sun's going to come up and that the air is going to be breathable and that we're going to have water and that our heart is going to continue to, to, to thump. Like we have, you know, like we don't doubt this stuff ever. We, we take it for granted. We think this is never going to end, you know. So, but anyway, uh, that's it for tonight, guys. Just wanted to share that with you. Hope, hope, hopefully you guys are doing well. And, you know, thank you again for listening in. Uh, we're at, this This was episode, uh, um, episode 82. So we're, we're tracking. We're putting some ground in there. And I'm, I'm glad. I feel good. I feel a little more confident. Um, I'm still at the point where I approach you guys. And I don't know what I'm talking about. I kind of babble a little bit. And I hope there's something, always something in there that you can grab. Even if it's one thing that you can grab from it. Um, I talk about it because it's therapeutic for me. So don't think I'm doing this all for you. These, this is also for me as well. And I just hope you guys can find something in it as well. So, all right, guys, listen, until tomorrow, be cool, be safe, enjoy your family, stay blessed, and good night, freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.